Okay, okay, shaman the big, shaman the boss, chicken, ooh, when ya ma, when ya ma. So I'm realizing a lot of what's going on with me um, and world joy movement, enjoyment, all that. When I think about the joy part, I say bringing all of you, bringing all of you to the table. I'm realizing that for me, at least in terms of my avatar, in terms of who I'm seeing and who I'm really talking to, it's, it, it's, it's me, A. Uh, and B, it's that portion of you have so much energy. You are a lot. There's no one else like you out there. There's so much going on that that is like unique to you. Stop holding it back. Stop feeling like you need to hold it back. Like the world joy is just the un, like unabashed expression of self. Unabashedly just being all of you and not having to worry. Are you going to like make someone else feel bad or is it going to be too much for someone else to handle who cares if it's too much for them to handle that might be the best thing you can give them that's really what i'm saying it's not even like go out there. that's what i mean by being unapologetically you it's like no don't hold yourself back don't hold yourself back from what you can be doing don't hold yourself back from who you really are this message is what it's about for me I see people being far bigger, far larger, far greater than how they actually show up in the world. And it's because I feel we've been taught to feel a certain way. We've been taught that there's certain norms as to how things are. And the fun part about this here is that it's just humans that made up most of these things. These aren't like laws of the universe of any religion or any God. It's just like we as people have made this thing up. For years, I've been made to feel bad about being, uh, what is it, a jack of all trade and a master of none. Well, guess what? I am great at a lot of different things. I am so happy that I've been blessed with the ability to touch a lot of different things and be exceptional at it. I'm, I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm not going to step back from that. And instead, I'm going to use all of those different skills to move forward. It's the reason why I can go out forth and say this to you right now. It's the reason I can say this to myself. It's the reason that I can be in multiple groups of, of people and know that it is possible to show up and be involved in a lot. It's the reason that I've been able to have an experience as an actuary, as a consultant, to tech, to building my own business, to moving out to Singapore, to going out and being in barbershop. There's no place I don't belong because I am master of so many different things. That's it. I'm not even a jack. Maybe I'm a queen. Maybe I'm a king. I am the master. I am an ace, my friend. <laughs> and that feels good. So when I think about world joy, I think it's just that, that, the complete unleashing. Um, the complete, uh, un, like lack of restraint, if that makes sense. And not in like a, like, it's just an unbridled sense of just being you and using that to like, uh, make the things happen. For some people, that's not them, you know, that, and that, I don't think that needs to be the case. There's some people there, like they're, they're comfortable, they're happy working in a certain place. That's fine. More kudos to you. Like keep doing that. However, there are people out there and, I feel it, my pioneers out there that are realistically struggling to, I'm going to, oh gosh, the word, the word mediocre comes up. I can't think of a different word here, but str struggling to settle. That's really what it is. Like it gets me. It, it, this is, this is the part that's really bothering me nowadays. It's like, I'll talk to people and they'll, they'll mention things and they'll, they'll they're like, they play at a game that's up here. And I have to like rest my hand, my head on my hand. They talk about all these things that they have to do to just lessen themselves, to turn themselves down, to bring themselves back a little bit so that they can feel like they can fit in. This is when I talk about people pleasing. This is where it comes from. It's like, oh man, I could be all the way up here. I have this much energy. We can do this. We can create this possibility. I can like see all these different things. I'm so excited for what's coming up. And if I really want to fit in, if I really want to belong, I actually have to turn that back down. I experienced it for the first time that I can remember in, in high school, at least the first, like the one that, um, that I identify with, uh, when I got a test result back and I scored pretty well on it and someone in front of me grabbed my test, looked at it, made a huge scene about it in the middle of the classroom. And I learned at that moment that when I excel, when I am, when I really show up and I do well, I make, I push other people away. I make them feel bad growing up. There, there's, there's the message of you're too much. 
you're too much, you're too much, you're too much. That story keeps coming, coming over and over again. And quite honestly, I'm over it. <laughs> um, and so, you know, pioneers, where are you at? Um, I'm creating something that's, that's a great, a wonderful container where actually I need you to be more. I need you to be more you. Don't turn down. I need you to be even more you. I need you to be bold enough to step up into the world. I need to be unapologetic, unapologetic about who you are and to use that to help us all move forward. Because my, I have a vision. I have a vision of a world that is led by givers. A vision of a world that is led with people who have just the capacity to just live in abundance and to give to others and to lead others to get to wherever they need to get to. A vision of a world that isn't driven by scarcity or isn't driven by competition, but is instead driven by cooperation, not even, not even cooperation, collaboration. That's when I talk about world joy, that's what I'm talking about. People just being all of who they are and being able to come to a place where every part of you has its space. Every part of you is ass. Every part of you is a part of the equation. Every part of you is included. Every part of you belongs. Every part of you can, con can contribute. Every part of you can collaborate. I'm over it. I'm over being told I'm too much. No, I'm not too much. Maybe you're too little. Oops. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no, but in, in reality, wow, I had to laugh that one off there. It was kind of uh, uncomfortable for me to say if I'm just going to be, be real about it. Um, I don't think it's either one of those things. I'm just, I just am. And even right now in this moment, in this video, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like a five or a six, maybe a six or a seven. I'm solidly a six. Like this started out as a personal video to me, so I didn't forget. I'm like, who am I? Who do I speak to? Who what, like what am I actually doing? Uh, who is the World Joy Movement all about? And it's from it's from that energy that I'm able to able to come out here and speak this out here. So I just want to put this out. Um, on Monday night, I'll be doing an event for the people who are pioneers for the multi-talented, multi-passionate leaders in the, in the world. And I say leaders very deliberately. I, this is not about, now, this is not about individuals that are like looking to just do things for themselves. This is about, this is a specific experience for leaders out there who either right now they're leaders or they aspire to be. And if you're watching this and you know someone who like really is on the cusp of greatness, but they don't know that yet, really who's on the cusp of uh, making wonderful things happen for themselves and the other people in their world, but they're playing a game that's much smaller than them, than what they really could be doing, please let me know. I It's my duty. It's my pleasure. It's my gift in the world to help people see a world of possibility, to shift their worldviews on a regular basis. And I'm great at it. And I would love to do that on a much larger scale. Um, and when I say a much larger scale, I actually think I mean a much larger depth with people who really are interested in this. I'm not trying to convince anyone that this needs to be where they are. But for my people, my pioneers, you know it. You, you hear this. You see it. And you want to experience it. And if you can do this here, the fun part about this is that if you do it, there'll be other people in your world. Other people who will learn that they can also turn up, that they can also shine all their light. Marianne Williamson and her quote there. I have to go find the poem and, and bring it out here. I don't have it off the top of my head. I'll probably commit to memorizing it at some point. Like, this is, this is about people who don't want to turn down their light in order to, to make other people shine, but want to shine even more brightly so that those around us can shine. We all, I want to help create a movement so that we set a vision as to what the world could look like, what it looks like when energetic, passionate, talented people who are givers are leading. A world that isn't based on scarcity, but instead is based on abundance. Because quite frankly, we know that it's possible to be a master of many, to be an ace of it all. And true mastery, this comes from my, my mentor here, but true mastery is to be able to help other people become masters. True leadership is to be able to help other leaders become leaders. First, it starts with ourselves. First, it starts with owning what we have. First, it starts with owning what we do and who we are. And from there, 
We can craft the visions. We can enroll other people in that vision. We can tell stories. We can do all the various leadership qualities that are necessary and leadership behaviors that are necessary. The reason I start with unapologetically you is because if we're not fully willing and ready to show up in all of our glory, in all of who we are, we play a much smaller game than we know that we're poss that, that is possible for us. And unfortunately, the people in our world suffer as a result. Because there's a lot of really, like, if you were leading the world right now, if you were the mayor of your your your, um, your town, uh, the governor of your state, you know, the the president of your country, what would be different? Think about that. What would life? What would our life be like? What would our generation be like? What would our children and our children's children? How would the shape of the world change if more people like you? We're leading things with more people like you are in charge. That's where it comes from. And we create that now. We create that in our individual moments. We create that in the way that we show up in the world. And we create that when we accept ourselves and understand all of who we are and embrace that and then leverage that to go forward. I had a great conversation yesterday uh, with someone that, 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 um, that I know. And she, we, we talk on a regular basis. She's helped me figure out a lot of things with enjoyment, with the world joy movement, with the things that I do. Um, and we have, a, we have a great working relationship. It's, it's awesome. And she said something to me that, went, that got into my head. She said, Nemo, you are a lot. And like there was like, there, was, there wasn't this facial expression, but it was like something like that. Uh, and like... I've never seen it. I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, Nemo, you are a lot. But I know that, she said. She's like, I do things beforehand and like I prep myself and I make my, sure that when I get into these conversations, I'm ready for it because oh, I know it's going to be a lot. But I know that at the end of it, I get so much from it. I know that I grow from it. I know that it's worthwhile. And so she does what, what, what she needs to do to make that happen. And I'm really excited to explore what it would look like for us to continue working together because those are the kinds of people I need in my world. People who are ready to be expansive, people who aren't asking me to shrink back in order to make them, uh, make them feel bigger, but are instead are coming together and saying, I want to grow. And through that process, I myself, me, Nemo, get to grow. I'll be, I'll be real. I'm selfish too. I'm self-interested. Let me put it that way. I want to grow consistently. I spend my time very specifically with specific people because when, because the game that they choose to play, even if it's just a game of introspection, reflection, uh, and just being open to what else might come for them, that game helps me grow. Nemo, you are a lot. Just that has now made me come out here and, and help me realize that like, yeah, that's what I, that's what it's all about. I am a lot. <sighs> My biggest worry is that I am not doing enough. Not that there's too much out there. Not that I have uh, problems I need to get taken care of. That I am not doing enough. That I am, I am capable of being a movement leader on the scale of Martin Luther King Jr. And I am not doing that. That's what keeps me up at night. When I talk to my pioneers, one of them said something that, that I was like, ooh, this is just, it's juicy and gorgeous. It just speaks to me. He said, Nemo, you know, I want to work with you because I'm not afraid of thinking small. I don't think small, but I don't want to think medium. I'm afraid of thinking medium. What a statement. What a statement right there. That's the game that we're playing here with enjoyment. And when I talk about pioneered leadership, that's what it is. That's going to places that no one else has gone before and knowing that you can because you are awesome. Because you, there's so much in you. I think I spent a lot of my time working with individuals, working with people who are truly unique, truly amazing, who have found throughout their life ways to be, to be squashed down to be turned down, to be squashed down, to be said, you're too much. You're like, hey, like, pull, like, no, I'm over it. I, I welcome you to join us. 
I welcome you to I would like to welcome you to my world. A world led by energetic, passionate, positive, smiling people who believe in abundance, who look to collaborate, not just uh, cooperate, who look to collaborate and aren't interested in competing. Mm. I'd like to welcome you to my world, a world led by leaders who are focused on possibility and not just solving problems. Solving problems? Come on. <laughs> See, so when I say this here, I'm like, yeah, all right. So I might be moving up from like a six to like a seven or an eight. Like I'm really getting into it. But like Ruby said this, and uh, I'm, I'm in a I'm in a, uh, a program with her because I spent a lot of time uh, looking for a leadership program uh, for movement leaders, a leadership program that's on the level that I'm trying to be at. Not just, oh, how can I lead my team at work? But how can I change my world? How can I be bold enough to say what I need to say and to, and to really be a beacon for the people out there who either resonate with, my, with what I'm saying or could use some additional support or just are looking for a peer who's like, ah, this guy gets it. Welcome to our world. And one of the things that, that came from, from my conversation with Ruby um, really just she, she said something, my first interaction. She said, oh, I get it, Nemo. You're looking for people who run towards possibility as opposed to running away from problems. Run towards possibilities as opposed to running away from problems. It's the reason why Peter Block's work on uh, community, the structure of belonging, it resonates so strongly with me because he's not, he doesn't, he's like, let's get together and let's build powerful communities together. And leadership is convening people so that they can take care of the possibility that they want to create. Not take care of their problem, but to come together to create something that couldn't have been done alone. That's what I'm about. That's what World Joy is about. It's about letting go of these problems that we think we have. It's about letting go of this competition that we have to say, like, where's one person versus the other? And it's about letting go of this feeling of, like, not being enough and knowing that, like, on the other edge of that, in the same token, in the same breath, feeling that you're already too much. That's a hard place to be. It's a hard place to be. Take it from someone who's lived it. And in many ways, still live it. This is a journey I think I'm going to be on for the rest of my life. I am deeply interested in seeing how much impact I can make in the world. Because I know that it's, it's there. Believe in unlimited potential. I believe in, I believe in unlimited potential. <sighs> There'll be a time where I'm out there working with everyone and helping every single person be able to experience this in different ways. But for right now, I'm looking to work with the people who are ready for it. You don't need to have been, you don't need to be at this certain level of, of expertise or all that different things. I, what I need to know is that you're someone who is energetic who's someone who has had a track record of success, has a track record of leadership and is look or is looking to build their track record of leadership. Someone who's going to do something with all the energy, someone who's going to give more to the world, someone who's going to lead and show the world what it looks like to have examples of a different type of leader out there. Some of you might watch The Handmaid Tale. The, I have been enjoying it, but I'm not sure if I should watch season three. Why? Because it depicts a wonderful world of dystopia. It, it depicts a world of like, here goes all the things that can go wrong. And I think about world joy, when I think about working with pioneers, when I think about the vision of having leaders who come from a place of abundance on a regular basis and serve their people in a way that Quite frankly, we may not be getting served right now. That is a that is a much rosier picture. And I'll talk more about this later on, but I think it's important. It's our job as leaders out there. And I'm speaking specifically to the pioneer leaders because only the pioneer leaders are still watching this. It is our job out there to create a new vision, to help people see a different way of being. Because right now, the images that we have, the things that are reinforced on TV, in our news, in our conversations, they're all things about what is wrong in our, in our world. What are all the problems? And we just stack it up. 
stack up the problems. And then I'm like, oh, let me go. How am I going to face this problem? How do I address this problem? Well, we need to understand all the problems. Well, why is this happening? All that. And it's great. It's cool. It's, I'm glad that we understand uh, understand the problems. But I'll be even more thrilled once we start working toward what we want. I'm smiling because I'm about to say something. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do um, is to let people know, like, yo, I am totally down for making America great again. I just don't think we spend the time figuring out what that looks like. We don't know what that possibility looks like. And, like, it puts a smile on my face because I'm like, it's, it's something we can't all come together around. But how do we create something that, that works for us? Look, I'm not saying any of this is going to be easy for anyone. But if you are a person who knows that you're called to do great things in the world, in whatever your world looks like, you can be an entrepreneur, you can be a business leader, you can be a parent, you can just be, you can be whatever it is. I'm not even going to say just because there's no limitation on it. But if you know that you're called for greatness and you don't want to settle, if you find that you've been turning yourself down in order to make other people feel good, or realistically, let's get down to the heart of it. If you feel you've been turning yourself down in order to be accepted, in order to fit in, in order to feel loved and part of something and like you belong. I want to let you know that you do belong. You belong exactly as you are. What you want matters, who you are matters, and what you believe matters. I want to create space for you. I'm not even, no, I don't want to create space. I've already created the space. The space exists. It's now up to you to see if you were to step into it. Send me a message, leave a comment, share this with one person who needs to hear it. Share it with everyone who needs to hear it. Put it on LinkedIn, put it on Facebook. Put it wherever it is. Send a message to your parents. Send a message to your friends. Send a message to your email. Like, let people know times are changing. It's time for the pioneer leader to run. Ish. <laughs> I don't know if I need to cuss on, on this yet. But it's time for the pioneer leader to make things happen. It's time for you to make things happen. However you do it in your world. You can be writing comedy. You could be leading a team. You could be making art. You could be another movement leader. You can work in the social sector. We need your powerful vision. We need all of you. We need none of what we thought those problems were. Instead, Let's go forth and create the possibility that we feel is worth pursuing. This is about creating a future distinct from our past. And every element of it is examined. Even the questions that we ask one another. I invite you, get in touch with me. Let me know. I'm putting together an event, it's a private event for people who are interested in this kind of pioneer leadership. And it's not a, a webinar to let you know more about it and such. It's a time for you to be a chance, get a chance to experience it. Get a chance to be around other big personalities. Other people who are a lot. Other people who show up in the world and it's just, they're just a six all the time. And it's still too much for people. Because my goodness, can you picture what happens if you got to turn up to a 10? and felt energized and felt comfortable and knew how to be there on a regular basis and surrounded yourself with people who looked at you at a 10 and said, oh, that's awesome. That was my 10 two years ago. Don't worry, there's so much more to come. People who ask, you say, who say, we need more of you. Bring it, feel free, expand and be all of it. Now videos are supposed to be short, two minutes. People don't have time to, to listen to me. And people are missing out. But you're not. 
So come, let me know that you're interested. There's an event. It's going to be an unapologetically you event. Um, it's going to be Monday night. I'm going to be doing this on a regular basis going forward, but it's all like, it's, it's not, um, it's invitation only and it's not free. Um, it's, it's something where I'm like, I need to know that you're committed. The people in that room play a very different game. If you're in for like a quick Instagram, like fix or like a little bit of motivation, this is not for you yet. If you're like, I'm ready for a lot of motivation, if I'm ready to actually be empowered and to be transformed, then we can talk. Then I want to see you. Let me know that you want an invitation and I will send it to you. This is how we're going to play the game. There'll be a time where it's open for everyone. For right now, I want to create space for you. For right now, I want to make sure that you're taken care of. Thank you for being a pioneer. Thank you for being a leader. I'm very excited for what we create together. I'm thrilled even just thinking about it. Let's do this.